I was discipled up in a wonderful church that was very Bible-centric, which just means, you know, they love the Bible, love studying the Bible, and there was a great emphasis on evangelism, but we didn't have much emphasis on corporate prayer. And so I, I just didn't really understand how to approach God. A lot of people are in the same boat that I'm in, where we value prayer. We know it's important. We value gifts of the Spirit, but we just don't know how. I can recall when we had just two minutes of silence at our church just to stop everything and focus on God and how unsettling that was just to be still for two minutes, you know? And that's what God has called us to be. Be still and know that I am God. Prayer is like this suitcase that's filled with a lot of things. These things can be daunting, hard to measure, hard to control. It can feel less like a suitcase and more like Pandora's box <laughs> for a lot of churches, you know? Like what, if we really press in here, what's gonna happen? What kind of church are we gonna become? I mean, God's throne of grace is not just this simple thing that we just go into like a, like a store. I mean, we are talking about a holy, majestic, wonderful God, but He welcomes His children with open arms. I don't think churches are embracing prayer at the level that it should be embraced. Uh, there's a power there, and we're, we're just not taking advantage of it. One day in Africa, I was praying, and I felt like the Lord was encouraging me that I would be part of a prayer movement among Bible-centric churches like the one I came out of. The Lord brought that word back to me with Matthew 18, 20, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. Two or more can actually come alongside and help give people a framework for prayer that's biblical, a framework for relationship with God that is biblical, and just help people go, hey, let's actually make space for the Spirit of God to do things He did in the Bible. Just casting the cares of the church. I know, especially with everything that's going on in the world, I've brought up, hey guys, let's pray for the world and what's going on. When you're praying with two or more, there's an agreement there with God's Word and with God Himself, and there's power in that. You can change your, your church. He's a miracle-working God, but I think He likes us to see us grow, and He does that by you know, we got to come to Him, and He's there, He's waiting. He's waiting on us. First of all, He tells us we need to pray. It's all on Him, and that is a double blessing, a double glory to God, that He inspires it, we pray it, He answers it. Unless God truly does move, nothing will happen. You know, Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. That is very true, <laughs> you know. Whether a church is already a praying church or struggling to become a praying church, and I don't mean there's a prayer meeting every so often, but there's a culture of prayer, of dependence on the Lord, of expectancy. Two or more is just so helpful, so practical. Just through the leadership of the scriptures, really, bringing what the scriptures say all together with faith and with obedience to just kind of break through a bit and get us into a different place where we really know we're sitting at the feet of Jesus and He's listening closely and He's speaking. It is a good tool for encouraging the practice of prayer among your, the members of your church, giving them an outlet, giving them a tool to reach out and connect with other believers on a regular basis to pray together and to be able to see the benefits of joining together with two or more when you're gathered in prayer. A group of men that pray together come from multiple different churches when you really begin to pray. Full heartfelt prayers with a full transparency, with a really praying for one another and that trust is really high. I think there's just a fellowship of the Holy Spirit that happens in that place that really brings a unity. The blessing it is to us to have that time with God and to build that relationship and to do those spiritual disciplines that help us to get more and more conformed to His image because we're spending more and more time with Him. So we have a number of ways to get involved. If it's like, hey, you're in a Bible-centered church, you hear this and you're like, oh, we need that. We need more prayer in our church. I want to try this. Get connected with me and we'd love to start a prayer meeting at your church. You can also become a partner in the ministry through financial giving and through 
prayer. We are a nonprofit. We are funded by very generous, God-honoring people who build treasure in heaven and they're like, hey, we want to give to this because we know it's a kingdom work. Is there anything more valuable that your congregation could be doing than, than praying? You know, if we've, got, if we've got time for Sunday school and if we have time for youth group and if we have time for all the other ancillary activities that take place in a, in a local congregation, we ought to have time a dedicated time for prayer. Just remind ourselves about the, the nature and character of who God is. And that's what we get to do in that time of just that total transparency before a Father who loves us more than we can imagine. The God who created everything listens to us. Jesus died for us so that we could be cleansed and made righteous and we could approach the throne of grace with confidence to find mercy in our time of need. He wants to partner with us and do we want to partner with him is the question.